now the rains are coming i've already helped you to kill bali now you have to help me to find sita ji but we will not do it until the rainy season is over and then in that break there to see that she takes time we'll see when we get there to describe nature and all of that sort of thing and the same sort of thing is being done here but ved vyas ji through the lips of shukadev is now describing all the most uh, well symbolic things of nature and that is um not anything fixed in shastras it is what we see in nature that reminds us of spirituality if the whatever we see reminds us of spirituality then it's good reminds us of sadhana reminds us of the path and all that so that is what is going on so now we have to see from number 13 see that jalasthalo kasa sarve navavare nishevaya avibhrad ruchiram rupam yatha hari nishevaya this is a very nice description now when the rains came all the beings whether <coughs> jalasthala aukasa aukasa means all the uh, okasa all the residents of jalasthala jalasthala means water and land both jalasthala in hindi jalasthala is in sanskrit it has come from jalasthala jala is water and sthala is the land when a jala jayate water and when sthala tishthati stha to stay that's how their names come see uh jala means uh what jayate means it is born a new every minute like that born a new every minute changing jala jayate and laya means born gone born gone the wave comes wave goes like that and sthala means that it stays tishthati from stha jala sthala kausaka okasa all your resident being of land and water they became sarve navavarini shevaya taking advantage of or taking recourse to the new fresh water that is coming in the rivers also all the fish and all they get nice fresh water rain when the rainy season come hmm? they took on an ruchiram abhi bharat abhi bharat means uh, appear new ruchiram attractive new rupam attractive form now how <laughs> example is yatha harini veshaya like those people who started practicing devotion to hari hari nive nishevaya sorry hari nishevaya those who started practicing devotion to hari who started and enjoying company of hari and observing all the rules of devotion like that <coughs> they take on a new look it is a true thing eh? everybody a person who takes on the spiritual path he gets a new look about him that is the idea and he says attractive ruchiram rupam attractive rupa and the one who is all the time in the in the other places unattractive rupa that is how you know <laughs> unattractive rupa this thing about rupa and all is not any simple thing it's right? real uh wonderful thing which is given in shastras so, everywhere that one on the spiritual path acquires a new glow that is the idea which is given new glow about him and those who are not there's a dreary look on their face easy to spot <laughs> and 
And then, what about all, all the rivers which met the oceans? How he describes that now? Saridhi Sangata Sindhu. That other word is a little bit. I don't know what which you have, what you have in your copy, but it is supposed to be chukshoba, chukshoba shwa, ah, saridhi sangata shi, chukshoba shwasanor miman. Apakwa yoginas nashchittam. Kamaktam guna yug yatha. He said it. Said it be of all the rivers. Sangata Sindhu that went to meet the ocean. The rivers that went and met the ocean. All rivers eventually end up in ocean only some place. Then. Chukshoba Shwasanur Miman. There, when they met, when the rivers met the ocean because of the wind, Shwasana. Shwasana. Urmiman. Urmiman is waves. Because of the wind and the, and the waves of the ocean all meeting there together now, rivers became agitated. Chukshoba. Very agitated. So, then when, in other words, in the rainy season, this thing, rivers swell up and they flow down to the ocean. And when they meet there, that ocean there, here they were just going, but now they are standing there just like that with all the waves and wind and all that they meet in the ocean. Then, how is that? Apakwa yogi, yogi nashchittam. Apakwa yogi nashchittam. Apakwa means, apakwa actually means raw, cook, uncooked. Pakwa means cooked. So a yogi's mind who is raw, not cooked by yoga, the tapas. I see. Um, yogi's mind that is not cooked by tapas. So a raw mind. And so such a mind, kamaktam, becomes all the time. Kamaktam is, akta means smeared or tinged like that. Kamaktam guna yugyatha. By all, guna, by all gunas of the world, by all materialistic things of the world. So, he appears like a yogi, but really is a bhogi. Like that. Because his mind is apakwa. Pach means to cook na. Pach, pach. So from that pach comes pakwa. Like that. So is This is how the words come on all. Apakwa mana. There's a wonderful story in the life of Sant Nyaneshwara. And there was a Sant Sant Melan that was going on. And all these, these saints were debating who's, who is the most exalted saint. And Gyaneshwara's younger sister was there. And she said, okay, I will tell Gyaneshwara, some, some uh, story in his life to bring humility. He was feeling he is, the, he is the most exalted of all the saints. So she said, I will tell. And she came down the line of all of them and she started knocking their head. You know, like when you knock watermelon to see if that watermelon... And when she reached by Gyaneshwara, she says, Apakwa. <laughs> <laughs> Story is there like that, you have to see. <laughs> Not yet ready. That word I remember from that. Anyway, so the tapas is supposed to really bring maturity, that is the idea. Maturity to the mind. So that it leaves all Karma, desire for this thing in the world, desire for that thing, the other thing, all the desires. Karma. So, this is the rivers. 
Then what about the mountains and the clouds and all of those? Well, in the rainy season, dark, heavy clouds gather over the mountain and lightning and thunder and all sorts of things happen. All that is being described. Girayo varshadhara bhihi Hanyamanan vivyatuhu Abibhuyamana vyasanehi Yatha dokshaja chetasaha Yatha dokshaja chetasaha When those two class consonants come together, it's difficult to say. Dhoksha <laughs> jacha. The cha, ja and cha, when they come together. So, girayaha, girayaha. Girayaha is what? Plural of giri. Giri hi? Giri? Girayaha. The simple Sanskrit. Varshadhara bhihi. Varshadhara means Varsham dharayati. Iti. Varsha. Those who hold up the rain. What hold up, holds up rain? Clouds. So you see, Varshadhara is a long word to say cloud. <laughs> Sanskrit language flow really like that, you know. Varshadhara. Those who hold up the cloud or the rain, varsha, then that means cloud. Hanyamana na, na vivyatuhu. Hanyamana means striking and beating and shaking and, and uh, what? Pouncing on. Hanyamana. What? The mountains. But what? Na vivyatuhu. Na vivyatuhu. They did not shake. Now, any, any number of Clouds and rain coming down could shake mountain. So the mountain remained fixed, unshaken. That is the idea, the, the unshaken achalam natya. The mountains are usually used to describe the achalam natya of Brahman. When nothing in the world can move, Brahman. Guruna pivichalyate. Even the heaviest thing cannot move mountains. No storm can come blow away all the houses and trees and all, but the mountains stay fixed like that. So all the dark clouds came pouncing down on the mountains, but then na vivyatuhu, vivyatuhu. Then abhibhu yamana vyasanehi. All these dangers. Vyasanehi means affliction, danger, and torment, all such things. Vyasana. But by all these dangers and torments and on all such things. Abhibhuya mana being attacked. Yatha adhokshaja chetasaha is a very nice word. Adhokshaja chetasaha means those who have turned their eyes, the eye of the mind within, they become unshaken. Those who have turned the eye of the mind within. It is symbolized by Lord Shiva. You've seen Lord Shiva's eyes half closed. Half closed. It is symbolized by that. It has been turned within. Not that there is a denial. So half open. So to, to show that there is no denial of the existence of the outer world. But the outer world is not everything. Half turned within. So, what it means to say, those who have turned their eyes within and absorbed in Brahman, they are unshaken like the mountains when all the heavy clouds and rain come down. Unshaken in the very same way. That is the idea. Otherwise, if our eyes are only turned outside, well, outside is shaking all the time. Isn't it? Brahman is called Achalam. Mountain is also called Achalam in Sanskrit. These two things. So one who is turned inside and is identified with Brahman, absorbed in Brahman, he becomes achalam like Brahman. And outside when he turns his eye, everything in the outside is just moving, moving, moving. 
So if his mind is attached to something moving, his mind will all the time also be moving. And so all the dangers and worries and cares and all the afflictions of the world, everything will disturb him only. But if he is anchored in Brahman, nothing will disturb. No matter what happens outside, when the ship is tied to the anchor on the shore, but if it is outside and a storm comes, you'll find him in China. He's outside here and a storm comes, the next thing you have to look in China only to find. But if he's anchored to something on the shore there, he'll sway and this and that, and but he'll stay. It's, am it's amazing how storms come and those ships get saved. Eh? They're such a fickle ground and they get saved. Shaky ground. But Adhok Shajat Chetasaha, very nice phrase. Our mind have turned inside and become absorbed in Brahman like that. The eye, mind of, the eye of the mind. Marga Babhu San Digdhaha. Marga Babhu San Channa. Hyasanskritaha Nabhyasyamana Shrutayaha Dvijay Kaal Hata Iva This is very nice uh, verse, you know. One, one sadhu, he decided, you know, these Hindu people they, they don't read anything. Hindu people are no, noted for not reading anything. Other people still read their scriptures and this and that. Hindu people never touch their scriptures. They will do arati for it, but they will not do it. Arati Shri Ramayana Ji Ki Kirati Kalita Lalita Om Jai Bhagavad Gita Maya Jai Bhagavad Gita <laughs> They'll do arti and sing, sing arti and very nicely. Or they will not know which is Rama and which is which is Gita also, because they have never opened to see. <laughs> so this sadhu decided he'll go from house to house, and he'll he take his Bhagavad Gita, and he'll call that householder and let them stand up by the door, and he'll read one verse for every house. He'll read this verse. Here and then next house, next verse like that, going down the road. So then he told that husband and wife, you bring your Gita, I want to read one verse for you. That hus they said, we don't have a Gita. He said, yes, you have a Gita. They said, how do you know? He said, I'm seeing it on the shelf. <laughs> From here, I'm seeing it over there. How do you know that is Gita? It has a lot of dust on it. <laughs> It has to be Gita only. If it was some novel, then the dust will not be there. Well, that is what it told in the verse here now. He says, Marga, Marga means all the road, the path. Babhu, Sandigdhaha. They became, you know, um, you, can, you cannot tell. Sandigdhaha means obscured. You can't tell. Where, which is, you know, sometimes when there's flood, like if there's a flood over here and you're coming, you don't know where's the road and where's the drain, you know? You have to be real, you'll drive down in the drain because everything is covered over a road drain, everything is just one sheet of water. So you don't know, everything is covered. So here, they become covered over by what? All the roads and paths. In those days, they didn't have paved roads, right? So, Sandigtaha Trenaihi by grass. Because in the rainy season, grass grow like anything. So all the roads also get covered over with grass and, and all that. Huh? He, asamskritaha. Asamskritaha means not cleaned. Not purified and cleaned and, you know, cleaned up. and uh, Nobody took a whole lawn more and cut it. Samskarya means to clean, to purify. So asamskritaha. Then, na abhyas. Yamanaha Shrutayaha Dvijayhi Kalahata Iva Just like what now? So in the rainy season, what is being described? The rains come down heavily and all the roads get overgrown with grass and shrubs and this and that. 
and nobody cleans it, so you can't see the road, you don't know anything about where the road is or nothing. So he said, that is exactly like what abhyastamanaha shrutaiha dvijaihi, by the brahmanas who did not study the shastras, especially in this Kali Yuga. All brahmanas are supposed to study shastras and themselves imbibe and then teach. But in Kali Yuga, nothing, nothing happens, kalahata iva, and in, in, in time, it gets lost, covered over. You know, no, you don't know where is the road anymore. So that is, he, it reminds him, Shukadev is telling, the, the rainy season, and it comes down and covers up the road and all, is like that now. What a sad thing. You have the Gita, Ramayana, Upanishad, Ityadi, Bhagavatam, everything is there, and people are supposed to be studying it, but nobody studies. And we know all our book and all other things very well, Harry Potter, wow, wow, wow. People, some people read every one and they know every page in it. And every character and everything. And, uh, what about Bhagavatam? Yeah, Gaur Kalyug. <laughs> it's Gaur Kalyug. Like that. So he says, like, Kal Hata. In time, it gets destroyed. It goes, goes away. Bhagavan told now, he said, fourth chapter to Arjuna. He says, I told this knowledge to Vivaswan, Vivaswan to Manu, Manu to Ikshvaku, and Ikshvaku to, like that, it went down, and then in the great expanse of time, <coughs> it gets lost. And so therefore today I'm telling you again, telling to Arjuna and then to all of us. In fourth chapter, in the beginning, you will we'll see. Vivaswan, Manu, Prahu, Manu, Ikshvaku, Bravit, and all like that, it goes on. So, <coughs> That happens when we become, we take lightly all of it. You know, I tell you, the Trinidad experience is a very nice experience. It's a wonderful experience here in this country. Indians came in 1845 for the first time here. Next door in Guyana, they came in 1839, six years before. They were already coming into Guyana. That means when the first people came here to Trinidad, in Guyana, some people had already served their five years. They had come on five-year contracts to work for the British. So some people there in Guyana, already they had finished their five-year contract and they, they had acquired land and they started already. The first group. But what we had from that time is because of pressures in the environment and all, a lot of pressure from the British and conversion, forced conversion, and so many things that they faced. Because if you have to get a job in any of their factories or anything, you will have to convert in their schools because they brought in the Presbyterian ministers from Canada, a fellow by the name of John Morton and his whole cohort, and then they started opening schools to educate all of these people, what they call education. <laughs> And so if you wanted to become a teacher, you had to convert to Presbyterian, like that. Many the mechanisms they had, and belittling Indian people and all sorts of things like that. So that onslaught from 1845, way up to the last century, the 20s, 30s and all, until the end of that Indian teaship, there was a great decline and a great amount of conversion that took place. And that went on all the way to the 70s. But somewhere in the 70s, 80s and all, there has been a great resurgence of this uh, Hinduism in Trinidad, especially from the time from when Raviji came back to Trinidad in the early 80s and all. The resurgence has been phenomenal. And we saw a purging and a cleansing of many of the festivals in Hinduism, for instance, where Kartik Snan, I remember in the early days, Kartik Snan, when people go by the beach, it was a time for drinking and fetting. Now, Kartik Snan has become a very holy and sacred thing. And so holy also, even Ramlila. All of it, there, were a lot of, there was a lot of corruption. All of it has become very holy and very sacred now. And 
now with the introduction of Chinmay Mission in Trinidad and Tobago that has given a lift because Bhagavad Gita, Upanishad and all the you know Vedantic Shastras and Sanskrit language being taught to so many people and so from, from the 80s when Raviji came till now there has been a great resurgence so it is the other direction to which this verse is talking about that, and this is what happens naturally eh? there's always a decline and again a rise and then again decline that's how nature works as well as see the economy one time is booming there's positive growth the next time recession all things work like that <laughs> you'll see your spirit in the day also gone down <laughs> people's spirits Sometimes you go down, forget to come up. <laughs> but that's how the world works. Your blood pressure. <laughs> Have you seen people with blood pressure? And headache. Sometimes the headache comes. <laughs> the funniest statement you'll hear about headache is in South India. Maybe in Kerala and Tamil Nadu and all. I have a headache all over my body. <laughs> I have a headache all over my body. Anyway, but there are days like that and days like. So he's talking about <clears throat> all the roads that come become overgrown and you can't tell. And because nobody cleaned it, he's careful to mention that nobody. Asamskritaha. Asamskritaha means having not been cleaned. Nobody cleaned up the roads when the grass come and grow. So the idea is the Shastras are sitting there. That is the only way to clean our mind is through those Shastras. So our mind becomes impure because we have not cleaned it with Shastras. And the Shastras themselves sit down there and get dust. Both. The Shastras sit down there and get dust and so our mind also gets all the dust. And the, you can also see from the verse that the onus is placed on Dvija, the knowledgeable ones, you know. Dvijaihi means the, those who are subcharged with taking knowledge and giving it, they themselves become like this now. They are charged with that responsibility. And they themselves leave the Shastras there and they get into all other things. <coughs> then all the clouds now he describes. How are these clouds? He says, see here. Lokabandhushu megheshu. Vidyutash chala sauhridaha Stair yana chakrukam inyaha Stadium Stadium na chakrukam inyaha Purusheshu gunishviva Lokamandushuk Megeshu Vidyutaha Chala Sauhridaha. Chala Sauhridaha means Sauhra. Sauhrida means a, a friend. Sauhrida. And Chala Sauhrida means uncertain friendship. <laughs> it means today is your friend. Tomorrow is. <laughs> Chala Sauhrida. Chala Sauhrida tell you means friend and Chala Sauhrida means mm. today is friendly, tomorrow he is. Chala means coming and going here, moving. And fickle, fickle. Like that. Chala. So his friendship is fickle. Then he says, Vidyutaha Chala Sauhrida. 
the lightning's friendship is fickle mean that lightning will strike in this cloud one minute that lightning will strike in that cloud in next minute lightning will not strike in the same place in the same place twice they say na <laughs> it is not it is not uh, it doesn't have any loyalty to any it will not strike the same place I mean that like a like a fickle friend he'll be friendly today and tomorrow you don't know whether he'll be friendly or not so loka bandhu shu me me ke shu the the clouds that are friendly to the world but the lightning is not friendly to the cloud or anything that lightning will be, be any other place it means it will shine up brighten up this cloud today and never come back it will go to some other cloud like that kind of thing eh? that is bhav which is coming from the verse make sure say sthairyam na chakruhu kaminya ha purusheshu gunishviva like kaminya kaminya means a fickle woman fickle woman who will not be faithful even to gunini uh, gunini means those uh, what you call noble uh, souls also noble men noble men of course that goes the other way also eh? fickle men also like ajamil and all his shastra is very strong in the same bhagavatam so like that both ways it goes so the, the just like the lightning has no fidelity towards any particular cloud like that that is what he means to say eh? purusheshu guni gunini gunishi eva and gunishu eva like that gunishu those who are purusheshi gunishu gunishu those who have great character and great qualities and all then next one he is describing the rainbow in the sky in the rainy season rain more also comes dhanur viyati mahendram nirgunam cha gunin yabhat vyakte guna vyati re vyati kar re व्यक्ते गुण व्यति करे गुणवान पुरुषो यथा अगुणवान पुरुषो यथा अवर ग्रह इज यू हैव टू ब्रिंग बैक दैट अ सो धनु व्यति व्यति मींस इन द स्काई व्यत व्यत इज स्काई सो व्यति इज सेवन केस इन द स्काई व्यति महेंद्र धनु महेंद्र धनु मीन द बो ऑफ इंद्र वन आर रेनबो अपेयर्स इन द स्काय दे से इट इज द बो ऑफ इंद्र इंद्र इज द किंग ऑफ द गॉड्स सो दैट इज हिज बो धनुर्व्यति महेंद्रम निर्गुणम च गुणिन यभात अपेयर इन द स्काय विथ nirguna nirguna means no string <laughs> that bow has no string <laughs> a stringless bow it says vyakte guna vyati kare agunan purusho yatha like is it in english translation just as purusha without gunas attributes manifest in the phenomenal universe which is this the disturbed state of the gunas of prakriti so did the rainbow without guna without bowstring appear in the thundering sky the element having sound as it guna or character all of that thing is not in that verse eh <laughs> but uh, th- this uh, translation is given by tapasyananda 
Sthyananji gives flowery translation and he adds many things also. But the, in the sky where, you know, there are no colors in the sky, isn't it? All these seven colors you don't see in sky. But where there is, without guna, I mean all of these colors and all that, I think this thing appears. So also in the reality. What it means to say? So also in the reality, which is without guna, this whole universe appears. So when he, in a guna less reality, gunas appear like that. What it means to say, what a wondrous thing. And in a guna less reality, gunas, all these gunas appear like that. Next, in a colorless sky, these colors appear. So now, when we see rainbow, we think about a pot of gold at the end down there or something, isn't it? <laughs> but when Shukadeva Maharaj of Vyaji sees rainbow, he thinks about how, 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 kya baat hai? how in a gunales, something which is devoid, nirguna thing, guna appears. It is something to wonder, you see. That is the idea. So the mind is taken in a different direction. Otherwise, see, that means to say what? See the Western thought. There is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. If it is, first of all, it is materialistic. And immediately you could see that. The minute you see it, you are only thinking about gold. Second, the imagination goes in a direction that is totally fairy tale. Isn't it? Fairy tale. Totally. And then they, they, tell, they think, Westerners think, that we think all for fairy tale things. <laughs> but immediately the mind goes, uh, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And they think, they say on this side of the rainbow, if you go, you'll be sucked up and you'll be thrown in the other side and all they tell. All sorts of things you hear. So you know, the rainbow is on this side. Don't go there. Shh. You'll be thrown to South Korea or something. <coughs> so now all have you thought about all of these names that we give and when we talk about relative world South Korea is called South Korea but it is north of the equator you know though it is north of the equator it is still called South Korea because it is south of North Korea <laughs> relative thing anyway so now <coughs> When he sees that rainbow, it, the mind is taken to a very great, deep philosophical depth, isn't it? How can guna appear in nirguna like that? What an amazing thing. Wondrous it is. Then, now that will be number 19. And again, very philosophical. See, see number 19. Nararajo dupashchannaha Swajyots narajitair ghanaihi Ahamatya bhasitaya aham Ahamatya Bhasitaya. Bhasitaya. Swabhasa Purusho Yatha. Oh. This is a very, very nice verse to reflect on. He says, Nanarajo Nanaraja Uru Paha. Uru Paha means the moon, Urupaha, Urupaha, there's another name for Chandra, Chandraha, Urupaha, huh? Nanarajaha, huh? Nanarajaha, it doesn't shine, why? Swajyotsna rajitaihi ghanaihi, because its light has been covered over by the clouds. Ghanaihi, by clouds. So the moon in the rainy season, all these dark clouds come, right? And they cover over the moon. And so you don't see the moon. 
But what a wonderful thing. It is only by the light of that moon you see the cloud. The clouds cover the moon and we don't see the moon. So when we look up, we see clouds. But how are you seeing the cloud in the night? If there is no moonlight. So you know that the cloud is behind the moon. And because of that moon, you can see those clouds. So he says in the same, Aham, Ahamatya, Bhasitaya, Swabhasa, Purusho, Yatha. In the very same way. Now you see when, I have seen the moon so, growing up we see the moon every day. I used to look at that moon over and over and over and you see the moon and see clouds and we never, you'll never think of this. In the very same way, the ahankar veils over the self, but we know the ahankar only by the self. The cloud veils over the moon. And the cloud which is blocking the moon is only seen because of that moon. And in the very same way, our ham ahankar, the individual ahankar, I. That covers over the infinite reality self. But that ahankar is known only in the medium of that light of the, of the self. What a wonderful thing it is. This pure Vedanta, now when, when he sees the moonlight and the cloud, he remembers pure Vedanta. Nothing else. So, like this, this thing goes on for verses and verses and verses. We saw it last time also when we saw the, in this session. What a, what a mysterious thing. That that thing, which is making the ahankar shine, that same ahankar is blocking that thing. You know that is a, uh, that is used, that is why Maya is called, um, a magician is called as Mayavi. A magician is called as Mayavi. Because that is what Maya, a magicians do, you know. Magician's duty is to make sure that you don't see the preceding step. You only see the result. Isn't it? What led to that result, they have to make sure by slay of hand you, that you don't see what led to the result. Then you see the result. Huh? You become flabbergasted. Oh, where it came from? He can only succeed in that if he makes sure that you don't see what is behind that result. What is, what, what is the cause for that effect? So now, that is ego's d duty. Ego's, ego is existing, but ego's duty is to make sure that you don't see the cause for the, the ego. What is behind? Ahankar, and th therefore he survives. That magician will only survive like that only. So who will come to see his magic? When we were children, I remember an aunt of mine. She, there's a little trick here in Trinidad. They do like this, right? They stick two pieces of paper on their, and these two fingers. And the, and the song goes like this, I'll tell you now. Two little tiki birds sat up on a wall. One named Peter, one named Paul. So this is Peter and this is Paul. And, two, and the two pieces of paper st sticking on the nails like that, right? And then the rhyme goes, fly away, Peter. And then what she, she switches this finger, and this finger with the, with, the, with the paper goes underneath, right? And this finger comes now. <laughs> fly away, Peter, fly away, Paul. And now, now these two fingers. Then as children, my God, where did it go? Where did they go? And then, come back, Peter, come back, Paul. And then, then these two fingers go, oh, pray. For weeks I was wondering where that thing went. <laughs> If you grew up in Trinidad and you haven't seen that, you haven't seen anything. You haven't. <laughs> and then after one or two weeks, only she told where it went. That thing was right there, it never went. Anywhere. Then like, like a flash of lightning, you know. Ho, ho. It's such an amazing experience, I tell you. I, mean, I, 
I was always wondering what happened to Peter and Paul. They, I, and then when she began, I looked all behind her ears and here and everywhere to see because she's going like that, right? But there is a duty of Mayavi to veil the truth, to veil, but the, the, the false which is appearing can be seen only by the light of the truth. What an amazing thing. The snake which is appearing can only appear because it borrows the existence from rope. If there is no rope to give existence to the snake, or to lend existence to the snake, no snake will be seen. And that same false snake which appears now, hides the rope. Exam exactly with this individual ahankar, which borrows existence from Brahman, but hides Brahman. The clouds, which block the sun and the moon, but they are known to exist only in the light of the moon. Like that. What a nice example it is. Okay, we shall see then. Some more next.